today's session. Okay, you can see we started recording. So anyway, good morning. And uh, for those of you who uh, didn't realize that this is our first CAN session of 2022. So happy new CAN New Year, I guess, right? Anyway, uh, today I'm super excited because uh, my name is Greg Dupro and I work, uh, I lead the data, the information strategy and analytics team in Haas Development and Alumni Relations. And today my colleagues from the University Development and Alumni Relations Information Strategy and Analytics team, Tam Wong and Jake Tolbert are here to present on a dashboard which our gift officers find quite useful and I find super well put together. And as a data analyst and data viz nerd, I think it's just fabulous. So I'm looking forward to you all seeing it. Uh, today's session will explore, am I meeting my goals? What should I focus on next? And let's explore how effective data visualization can align fundraiser activities with our focus on results, transparency, and accountability. UDAR's major gifts fundraiser metrics dashboard tracks act activity that results in gifts and has been one of the keys to the success of the $6 billion Light the Way campaign. And uh, I'll also put in a quick quick uh, plug for the big give is coming up. And I know that's something Jake and Tam, I'm sure, are already busily putting the other tools to, to measure progress on that too. But anyway, let's talk about major gift fundraising metrics today. I'll turn it over to Tam and Jake from the University Development and Alumni Relations Information Strategy and Analytics team. Enjoy. Thank you, Greg. And it's such a mouthful that I'm not going to try repeating it. <laughs> uh, let me share my screen so you all can see our presentation. We're going to take this pretty short and sweet today so that you have lots of times for questions. And um, I want to start by saying that in this demo, Jake and I want to cover how providing results oriented, usable and actionable information um, through these dynamic dashboards is is key to supporting our units business objectives. It's been, you know, as as Greg mentioned, one of the key successes of this campaign that we're in. Um, we're at $5.4 million of a goal of six billion 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 let's make that billion <laughs> 5.4 billion dollars of a six billion dollar goal um campaign goal and we've still got about 18 months left to go so it's like um you know it, it's we're gonna blow it out of the water i think but um even though this was introduced a bit further into the campaign it has really really accelerated what our fundraisers have been able to do um just these past couple of years. So let's just get right into this. Um, I know everyone's always anxious to see the actual dashboards right away, all the context, who cares? But well, we care about the context because setting it up is really important. Um, so this is a teaser for you. These are the two, dash, two, two dashboards um, making up this set. And um, our gift officers and their managers across campus use these to track and manage their solicitation activities. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Ron Eisenstein. I, I think you've heard his name in the last three sessions that <clears throat> you've seen and can, but he from the Solus Group um, really, really did an amazing job turning our vision uh, into the functional reality that you're going to see today. But no one person ever does any of these things by themselves. So we got to recognize that there are a lot of people you need to involve to make something like this a true success. Um, so speaking of who helped in this project, um, a project that has the reach of this particular dashboard um, requires involvement from across the business as well as te uh, technical functions. And here you see at the top, we've got our, our sponsors. Um, uh, they are our business sponsors. And one of them was our ultimate boss, you know, who, who, uh, who oversaw the advancement information services teams. But um, you also see on the left sides, you know, the uh, business owners, these are fundraisers across campus who um, joined in with UDAR to, to come up with the strategy. Uh, that 
we implemented through these dashboards. Uh, the middle in the blue, you see sort of just the key uh, leads on um, pros in prospect development in our teams, our CTOs there. Um, and then on the right, you see our uh, the leads for our technical teams. And below, you have a, a quick summary of the types of roles and, and, and mm, responsibilities that all of these folks were um, uh, helped us with. So our stakeholders through all this and through a lot of communications from us understood that their support and their participation was critical. Um, and they really, I, I think they went all in. Granted, they're all busy fundraisers too. And so um, you could say that they said ahead how much they were willing to be a part of it. <laughs> and that was clear also. <clears throat> Here, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, our reporting initiative was launched as a mechanism by our campus fundraisers. Um, <clears throat> and they, they wanted a way to align their activities with strategic objectives. So even before we came into developing this particular um, dashboard, there was already a lot of um, work done to figure out what the metrics would be. So you'll see the metrics later. But even in that, they had sort of a guidepost as to how they were gonna talk about and, and, and come up with these metrics. Um, so within that, some of the core guideposts that they, they kept to was we measure activities that result in gifts, we value transparency and accountability, and a shared focus on results yields better strategy and scale. So, it was awesome that this was already in their heads, right? And we could totally adopt it and align it. Um, I want to also mention this video that you see on the left. This is our vice chancellor, by the way, Julie Hooper. Um, we actually, in, in launching this dashboard, we got our fundraisers and our vice chancellor to promote it. They actually endorsed it on a video. They you know, pointed to things that were really impactful for them. And this is what we launched with, which really generated a lot of, you know, hype and, and excitement around, um, around this work. So speaking a little bit of user involvement and all that, um, this list was uh, things that we, we sort of teased out of our fundraisers and, and um, functional roles across campus. We, we did interview over a hundred stakeholders, you know, to get at what is the most important things to you? How do we deliver tools that will work for you? Um, obviously you see what they said was their one important thing. And obviously we couldn't do everything people asked for because real time data, that's just a dream for us right now. <laughs> um, but we could focus on some things. I mean, there were definitely things like usability, uh, reducing spreadsheets. We were too dependent on spreadsheets um, and um, reducing the number of reports that people had to, to answer the questions that they, you know, they, they wanted to get to. So this was really important for us to be able to understand what we needed to focus on from the things that people found you know, were most important for, for productivity, for effectiveness. Um, and here, this was a little grid that we developed because a lot of things came out of these discussions um, and how do you prioritize? So we used this, I won't go into details. You can, you can look at, a, at it on your own, but ultimately we had come up with a list of what are the important business questions that we were gonna have to cover in our projects. And um, we laid it out in this grid to talk about, you know, what data do we have? What reports did we already have? What, what were in place? What was not ready? Uh, what needed to be built? Were there processes in place? You know, so we, we did this little decision chart and um, we thought, well, it, it was obvious all, already that this major gifts fundraiser metrics dashboard was going to be the most important thing, but it also happened to be that we, had, we were the most ready in terms of data infrastructure some business process had to be worked on, you know, so um, this was a way that we could say this was how we came at this and um, just, you know, jumping ahead a little bit, 
we're working on the other we're we're done with some of the other you know questions here and we're we're continuing to work on this this is like a great roadmap um very high level but a great roadmap for us to say here's the rationale behind how we're approaching you know answering the questions that people find most important uh so with that said um i'm going to hand it over to jake because you really want to see the lovely demonstration that he has and um also kudos to jake because we really struggled with how we were going to demo this because the data that we have is real and it's confidential it's really you know um not something that we should record and share <laughs> to the world. So Jake actually spent some time with Manny Duero um, to develop a, a test, you know, demo database. And here he goes. All right, I can unmute before I shared and then uh, I had to find the share of the menu. And so this is the a look at the dashboard itself. Um, so there's like Tim mentioned before, there are two pages. Uh, really two main pages to the dashboard. There's the, the team metrics, uh, which is this, and then there's an individual uh, metric, uh, fundraiser metrics goal, which is the second page. Uh, we're gonna come back to this in a second, um, but we're gonna spend our time first here, and then we'll look at the next one and talk through those things. And, and like Tim mentioned, we this is pseudo real data, right? It's obfuscated. We've replaced everybody's names, um, both prospects and fundraisers, so you can't quite look in and be like, oh, that's uh, so-and-so. Um, so you can, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what the things really look like. Um, Tim talked a lot about sort of those guideposts about the things that um, drove this sort of work. Um, you know, transparency. Um, transparency was a big key for us uh, when this, there was a lot of talk, you know, as we were both this project and several other projects as we're rolling those things out, you know, do we make everybody's metrics available to everybody? Can everybody see their own, not only their own metrics, but everybody else's? And uh, we finally decided if, if we're gonna be serious about transparency, we have to commit to it. Um, and so to do that, uh, at this point, you can get to anybody else's metrics. Right now we're looking at uh, one particular unit, but if you wanna go in and you wanna change it to another, any unit, you could find the metrics for that particular unit and see what's going on in those particular units. Now, truthfully, when we look at the usage data, there's not a lot of people who are digging in and being like, well, what are they doing over there? Um, where we see that being really useful, on the other hand, is particularly for folks that are managing these units when they're managing a team and they say, okay, I feel like we're on track pretty well with our goals, but um, there's this particular other area where we're really struggling. Um, is everybody struggling with that? Or is that just us? Uh, and being able to look at other units and compare and make those comparisons and say, oh, this is a campus-wide problem. Um, and then I talk to my, then talk to colleagues in, at other campuses, oh, this is a industry-wide problem or, oh no, this is specific to us. This is something that we're really struggling with. Being able to have that transparency has been really useful and, and valuable for, um, for our teams. Um, the other thing that Tim mentioned is this sort of focusing, this focus on metrics that drive giving. Um, you know, as we think about that, uh, as, we, as we began to put this together, the, you know, there was a big question about what, what goes on here? And you can see we've got fundraiser, you know, each row is a fundraiser and then each column is a particular metric. You know, how much, how many visits have you done face-to-face -face contacts with people that you're gonna be asking for? Uh, how many times have you asked someone, will you support Cal? Um, you know, what's the sum of those dollars and so on and so forth. Uh, we, if we had given everybody their way, we could cram a million metrics on here um, and in fact, the project that I'm working on when I'm not presenting is actually figuring out what do we do with all those other metrics? How do we present those in a, re in a useful way? Um, but we really wanted to think about what are the handful of metrics, the you know, six metrics that really drive giving. Um, and as senior leadership looked at those things, this, this is where we really came down. These are the, the six things 
that we want to measure because we know these six things drive giving. These six things are gonna help us make a, complete that campaign goal to make that, that goal of $6 billion. Um, so we know these are the things that we want to measure and so that we can drive towards our, our actual goals. Um, so that's, that's how we really determine that, is really that focus on strategy. How do we, you know, what is our, what's our overall goal? What's our strategy for getting there? Is driving visits, driving asks, driving commitments, um, and then measuring those specific things. Um, the other thing I wanna point out uh, about this dashboard uh, is that the goals, the, the, the lines aren't necessarily solid exact numbers, they're actually percentages. Right, and you can see that really useful here in this line with, uh, in when we look at the total ask dollars. You know, Jalen has asked for six point five million dollars, whereas Sahir has only asked for four hundred thousand. Right, but their bars look almost the same. Well, that's because Jalen's goal is seven million dollars, and so they're ninety four percent of the way to that seven million dollar goal. Sahir is 80% of the way to that to a $500,000 goal, right? So what that does is it allows us to put very different fundraisers together on the same page. Um, and that's important because we because every unit has that really broad range of different folks doing different jobs, approaching different rules. Um, and if we tried to cram, I mean, this person has $23 million. And we tried to cram that next to $400,000. Like the scale would be really, really difficult. And we wouldn't be able to see really what Sahir was doing at all. Um, and it would really minimize Sahir's work, which is not what we wanted to do. Uh, we really wanted to, to make it so that every fundraiser, regardless of their role and regardless of what they're doing, can see, am I going to be reaching my goals? Am I going to be driving this bar up so it hits that yellow line? Uh, which is whatever my whatever my particular goal is, and it flips that bar from from gray to yellow. So that's really the strategy here is um, is how how do we present in a way how do we present the data for each individual metric for each individual fundraiser in a way that drives that fundraiser um, to equi and equips them so that they can be more effective at what they're doing. Um, so that's kind of the, the overview. Tam, anything else you want to add before I move on to fundraiser metrics? Just a quick note, this gray line that you see, um, I don't know if, yeah, you, you need that's to point to it. Thank you. Yes. The gray line you see is actually progress through the fiscal year. So even though we don't tell people by this point, you need to be here already, it's a good guide, right? It's saying we're this far through the fiscal year and you're, um, some of them are tracking that line. Others are behind and others are ahead of it. Uh, it's just, you know, not saying you have to be here. It's a, here's a good guide for you in case you need that. And of course that this line moves throughout as the fiscal year goes on, right? So when we start the fiscal year in July, that line is, you know, over here in the, the left margin and moves up to that and eventually it hits that the yellow line, which is the goal line, um, to 100%. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to click over here so we don't have to watch it load. Um, so this, the last one, we looked at an entire unit, right? We looked at the whole multiple fundraisers at a time. Here, we're looking specifically at just one fundraiser. Um, so again, we've selected Jalen Brown, and just like before, um, you know, we kept transparency as a key. Like we, you can select and you can dig into any fundraiser that you want um, and see what they're doing, what their goals look like. Um, but we maintain the same idea of let's look at that fundraiser against their own goals. Um, so we can look, and we're here in this, this first uh, upper left quadrant, we're replicating the same metrics that we saw on the team metrics, right? Like this visits, asks, commits, qualifications and significant contacts, same, same metrics uh, that we saw before, whereas before they were going horizontally, we just turned them sideways to, um, to make it clear and uh, fit that space a little bit, um, a little bit better. Um, 
So that quadrant here, the sort of quadrant um, pattern that we used here, we really set this in in reading order. Uh, you know, from upper left, you figure you read to the right, and then come down, just like you would, because we we want to say, okay, what's the most important thing? Well, the most important thing is these metrics that we've decided are going to drive our success. Uh, so that's what we want focus people to focus on first um, is those metrics. Following that, we're moving to the right. We look at solicitation pipeline. So this is, do I have enough in the future? Do I have enough stuff planned out that when those things come to fruition, I'm going to meet my goals? Um, so we can see here, you know, again, this line is today. Um, so in the future, uh, Jalen expects to have a million dollar proposal come to fruition sometime in May. Um, another five hundred thousand dollars in what's that June, um, and then a whole bunch of stuff that's going to total two million over two million dollars, sometime at the close of the calendar year, right? So this gives us a view into what do I need? Do I have things lined up? Am I doing the groundwork now so that I can be successful in the future? Um, and that gives us the, that's what we call the pipeline is this, is there a pipeline of proposals so that we can meet our goals? Uh, we have another tool that does this, a similar thing in a lot more detail. Um, and so we, and folks know that if they wanna, if you really wanna dig into the, the nitty gritty details of the pipeline of what's in my pipeline, well, you go to the pipeline report, right? But when you're thinking about general metrics, when you're thinking about kind of the high level picture of what does my work as a major gift fundraiser look like, pipeline is the is the second thing you think about after your metrics. So metrics, pipeline. So we wanted to give folks a view into that. Um, down here, as we come back down around the around the page, so to speak, we have uh, a look at uh, what am I doing? What are the significant contexts that I'm making? Why am I why am I doing these particular things? Uh, what's the purpose of them? Um, am I spending my time where I should be? Um, so the question, you can, here we can see that Jalen's spending most of their time uh, making solicitations, which is good. That's what they need to be doing. Uh, they're just spending their time making solicitations. They're spending their time doing cultivation. Um, so that's really the fun, you know, the, their focus. Um, if we saw, you know, for a, a mature fund, a, a, a fundraiser with a mature portfolio like Jalen, if we saw them spending all their time in qualification, uh, which is typically the idea is you say, oh, who are these people? Or, will they be good prospects? I don't, I don't know. I don't Let's Let's qualify them and see if they are or not. Um, if we saw that Jalen was spending all of their time here, we would know immediately know that, oh, that's a red flag. Something's either Jalen's portfolio, uh, the people there are not the right people for Jalen or Jalen's not doing, performing their role and, and working, doing their job in the right way. Um, so we can, this hopefully gives us a view into that. Same thing here with visits and qualification outcomes. Where am I spending my time? What are the efforts that I'm making uh, really doing? Finally, this last quadrant, um, we have, so here we have a scatter plot with each dot representing a prospect to so somebody that uh, the fundraiser is talking to, trying to build that relationship with Cal um, in hopes of them eventually making a gift. And uh, across the x-axis, we have what we call capacity. Which based, in essence, what size of gift are they capable, is that person capable of making? And then down the y-axis is how long has it been since we've contacted them? Uh, so. I've never contacted them. It's been over a year since I contacted them. Uh, six, 12 months ago, I talked to them uh, or I talked with them in the last six months. The idea being we can immediately look at this sort of upper left and say, are there any really big prospects uh, that I've forgotten about? Are there really big prospects that, oh man, I've got, I've been trying to contact them, but I just haven't been able to do it. You know, are there people that I've, that I really need to focus my work on? Um, the other thing this lets us do is when you sit down, uh, when that when the fundraiser sits down with their boss, they can say, okay, where's the sort of weight of this chart? Uh, is this chart weighted like Jalen's is down here in the sense that, oh yeah, you're talking to most of your people on a regular basis. You're spending time with them and really doing a good job 
uh, getting in contact with them? Or is the most of your chart, is the weight of your chart up here uh, where you just haven't been able to get a hold of people um, or um, you know something else is going on? You know, what, where's the weight at? And, and so you can immediately see you know, how successful they've been at making visits. And also, are there folks that we need to contact? So that's the kind of high level view. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out is we know how these sort of dashboards go. Uh, we know that when, we, when people get into these sort of dashboards, they say, oh, this is great. This is exactly the summary that I needed. Oh, but 29 asks, wait a second, when did I, I've met my goal there. When did we meet that goal? Um, so we tried to anticipate that next question. Um, and provide in the tooltips the answer to that next question. Um, so here, the you know the, we think the next question is, when did I meet that goal? How am I doing over time? Uh, and so you mouse over and you get this view into oh, I met my goal in February, uh, and I was really doing a good job building in early fall. Met my goal in February, and then I've got more work to do to finish out the out the fiscal year. Um, and we see that. Uh, in multiple different places. Uh, one of the things in the pipeline, for example, is that we would say, okay, well, what are these, these, these red dots or these red bars are people that I've asked, but they, but they haven't told me yes or no yet. What, uh, who are those folks? Do I need to follow up with them? Um, and so this mouse over here said, gives me a list of how long, who are those folks that have been asked that haven't responded and how long has it been since I contacted them? Uh, or uh, rather, how long has it been since I made that ask? Uh, and we see, again, we've tried to anticipate that next question and use the, the tool tip for that. Um, the other thing that we tried to anticipate was the, yeah, can you give me that? This is nice, but can you give me a list? Uh, I really wanna print this out so I can work off my spreadsheet and tick off names as I go. Um, and each one of these uh, tooltips, how you can see down at the bottom, is click to view contact details. Um, so that's going to take you up here. It's going to jump you. It's going to filter the dashboard and move that, take you straight to here. So you get a list of that those 246 contacts. Um, same thing here. If we click the click to view solicitation details, that would give us those 23, a list of those 23 qualifications. So folks can export that data, export that list, and they can whatever it is that they need to do in Excel or print it off and you know scribble on it, scribble themselves some notes, um, and then talk with somebody about okay, this is where I'm going with that. This is how I'm, I'm taking care of that. Uh, so we've tried to expose both the details that they need, but only when they're ready for the details, um, and instead focus their their attention immediately on the things that are really driving strategy um, rather than taking us immediately into the weeds, um, but still making the weeds available um, because we know those are really valuable details as well. Tam, anything else that you wanna add about this that? No, I think that covers it. Share there. We do have a question in the chat about how long the dashboards have been in production and how, or how long have they been available to fundraising staff? I think you're on mute, Tim. I put myself into share mode and it just like <laughs> froze up everything else I was doing. So sorry, uh, let me, <laughs> one thing at a time. Am I sharing? Are you seeing it? Yeah, but we can see your notes as well. There no, we go. Okay, I don't want better. you to see my notes. <laughs> um, so let me stop sharing that. And then I will get to your question. I just can't like figure out Zoom and, you know, uh, there we go. Okay, so we're just going to share this thing. Okay, there we go. Um, this dashboard was launched in um, 
the spring of 20, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting it now, 20, uh, 2019. It was the spring before we launched uh, the, the public phase of our campaign. And um, so was there a follow-up question to that question? It, they asked about how long they've been available to fundraising staff, but they're, I mean, that was when we launched them publicly that we yeah. launched them straight to the fundraisers. So yes, yes, yes. Um, so those are what Jake just covered. And, you know, when we roll these things out, we should always think about what, what would measure success, right? Um, for us, it's kind of simple. Are we going to raise more money? <laughs> and um, granted, major gifts fundraising is is just a complex business, right? You could have a really big gift come in, and that's your success. And was that really driven by this tool? Probably not, but maybe a little bit. We'll take a little bit of credit. <laughs> You know, these really big gifts that we've gotten, the 300 million that was just booked in January, those types of things take a lot of work. And sure, our tools give those fundraisers, help them be more efficient and productive, right? But they're not the things that brought in that $300 million gift. <laughs> Where we saw, it was really interesting because this is a picture of um, our gift pyramid from uh, year to date, December. And look at this section down here. So these are gifts of, we'll call it, you know, from the lowest levels to a million dollars. And really our major gift fundraising, as you see it, is really about 25K up to a million or 5 million. That's sort of where a lot of this, you know, this, this dashboard impacts those because there is a volume of those. There's a lot of coordination. There's a lot of tracking. This is the sweet spot for us. And look, all of the years before where you see the orange and you know the whites are kind of like we held steady, the orange or reds are, we were declining. So in all those areas compared to a three-year average, we were actually on a decline. And you could, you could say that the pandemic and lockdown affected some of that, right? But we're still in the pandemic and look at what's happening now. So we think that the blues represented here are the fact that um, this measuring what matters most is producing results. Um, and so I was asked to explain this. <laughs> and luckily, the next tool kind of explains this. So we, we have this um, way of looking at the solicitation success rate. But the main thing I wanted to look at here was our numbers of asks this was so this was a comparison comparison year over year um, uh, backwards from the end of January so this is one year back from January this is one year back from the year prior um, you can see here's the number of asks we increased the number of asks by 40 percent and I wonder whether this was change in people's um data recording practices. Maybe they were making asks but didn't record them and now we know about them. I don't know, right? There's a lot of things that we don't know and a lot of um, analysis that is still squidgy because <laughs> we're still getting our business process set. Um, so in a couple of years, I think we're gonna be very sure that yes, we can solidly compare all these things and like pre be pretty sure that they are apples to apples. Right now, all we know is we're recording more asks. And even though our success rate is quote unquote down, you know, considerably compared to the previous period, in solid numbers of asks at these, these at these, you know, levels, we are up. And just by volume, by the math, if you're asking more at these levels, and even if your solicitation success rate is slightly lower, you're still doing better. So um, I, we're taking from this that making these numbers transparent, putting goals to the things that matter most, you know, that bring in results um, has really been effective. Um, and I think I'm gonna leave it at that.
Hi, this is Alfred. Can can you go back two slides? I was taking a look at that um, and had a question. Like, how do I do that? And <laughs> <Well, laughs> you can do the back arrow. Oh, yeah. This one. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm noticing. Uh, I think it's red there in the 10 million to 49 million in the FY22, which looks bad, but I'm wondering, and I don't know if there's a way for you to know, but I'm wondering if did some of those convert into those 50 to 99 or, or more than 100 million, like something that looks bad at that level, you know, from the five to 49 million, you know, did it was actually a good thing that, you know, basically people were giving more, so. So you could ask if we're cannibalizing ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, are we cannibalizing the 5 million and 10 million to get these bigger? I, I would say, I don't know. Um, I would say also that previously we didn't set our sights very high. Maybe the people we were asking more at those levels, um, we are now asking higher. You know, so there's a lot going on here that we don't have full explanations for. And the numbers at those levels, in a given year, there may be a hundred total asks at those levels. Um, so can we draw really great conclusions? I don't know. But one of the questions I was asking, you know, myself last year was at the million dollar level, were we cannibal cannibalizing ourselves there and asking higher? Right. So those are things. It's an awesome question, Albert, and we, we ought to look at it. But know this, it's not like we're going back to the same person and asking again and again and again, although we have some people who do that. <laughs> there are some people who give us like, yeah, 10 million every year, <laughs> you know. But um, we are trying to find new prospects all the time. And um, so the other thing about the solicitation cycle is at these levels of five, 10 million and above, the ask time frame for them is, you know, in the range of three to five years. It's rare that you go in and make an ask and get it right away for that level. For the lower levels, it can happen within, you know, a short, short time frame. Um, we, again, Jake talked a little bit about one of the projects he's currently working on. Um, one of the uh, metrics that we're going to dive into a little more is um, uh, time to close. How much how much time does it take to close at these various levels? You know, to see if there's uh, efficiencies or if just this is natural. I mean, how and, and if it is natural and this is the normal course of of the cycle, then we can build it into our forecasts. You know, uh, projections and things like that. But there are a lot of things we still don't know, mainly because we've only just really, you know, sort of um, tightened up how we're recording this data more consistently. And, and our fundraisers recognize that it's important to get their data into the system so that we can count them. The better we get at that, the better we're gonna get at analyzing what's really happening. Great. Well, the rest of the participants warm up their questions. I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Jake and the team for preparing the yeah. you know, sort of the scrambled, anonymized, whatever data set that made it possible for you to share something live because, you know, it, it definitely makes a difference. I could definitely see like you were able to show the dashboard live, you were able to demonstrate things, we were able to see tool tips uh, and, you know, for us to be able to see your, uh, your Tableau uh, visualizations live was very helpful. So thank you for the work doing that. Um, I, I love things like seeing the tool tips to the next visualization to, to sort of answer the next question. I, I love that idea. Um, and um, let's see. And yeah, my, I love the change readiness matrix that you had in an earlier slide. Like, I think it, it puts, I think I probably just naturally do it in my head, but I can see how that just really helps communicate, you know, uh, your decision making or you know get our, get everyone on the same page as far as like this is why we're going up with this first and this is why these things are for later releases so um yeah all right that's all i have thank you thanks for those observations um especially that readiness thing it was a way for us to say 
how do we show a roadmap? How do we plan? Because frankly, while we're working on that top thing, we're starting to work on the data needs, you know, that will track the other things. And there's just so many different moving parts that if you don't have intentional, you know, planning, you could just be focusing on one thing and then the next thing. And that could really slow things down, right? It's also really easy to let these things spiral out of control as you <laughs> develop them. You know, you start on a dashboard that you think is going to be just about fundraiser metrics, and all of a sudden it's about comparing all these things to all these other things to all the, and you're like, and having that matrix of like, okay, this is where we're going to do sort of prescriptive things. We're going to do that once we get the descriptive things in place. Like that makes a big difference to be able to say, wait a second, this, let's scoop this off and wait on that until we get these things in place. And then we'll actually get this thing done uh, as opposed to letting it be a two-year project that never actually gets out the door. I, I wanna follow a little bit on that. I mean, one of the things I get asked is, why aren't we doing more prescriptive analytics? Why aren't we doing models and machine learning and you know the wonderful things that you see out there? Um, and for us, we're still, not quite in the baby steps anymore. We are toddling, I think, but we had to say until our colleagues out there can measure their own work and can see and analyze it, going to prescriptive analytics is a little, sure, we could go there, but can they tell that they've actually done something? <laughs> that, that, you know, whatever that was, moved a needle back here. So we're trying to set that up. And not that we didn't have that before. They were just in clunky spreadsheets and, and things that weren't dynamic and, and, and a gazillion of them because you know we could only focus on a single answer at a time. Um, so we're still somewhat there, but I think we are almost at the point where we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna start running. In the next two or three years, we're gonna start running. Right now, we've toddled, we're starting to walk a little faster. <laughs> um, so it's exciting, it's exciting, but in the meantime, doing this helps us solidify our definitions of things. Janara. Oh, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, I mean, like it's, it's so, what a privilege to have, um, to have your insights into, you know, this process from the very beginning and, you know, ends, and you know, and the challenges that you're, you know, you're, um, you're going through now, and also like the the future. I mean, it, it's it's really incredible. And um, and I feel like the last presentation, I was, you know, I was uh, amazed. And you know, hearing today's presentation, you know, like it's you just showed like a whole other side of it that you know, I'm like my mind is blown. Um, <clears throat> and um, I think specifically, I, I was really impressed by. Um, you know, how you walk the fine line between um, transparency and privacy um, of, you know, of, of this data. Um, and um, and um, I guess I, I, I'm, I'm impressed that, uh, you know, um, that, you know, you've turned this into, you know, something that's helpful not only for decision makers, you know, at the high level, but also for fundra fundraisers themselves, um, and how it constantly helps, um, you know, them to, you know, um, you know, decide, make decisions about how they're spending time and what they should be doing um, uh, more of and less of, and um, and like, and I'm just like, okay, like I, I, you know, I don't work in fundraising, but I'm like, I, I want this, you know, in my work, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, like, and so like, I'm just thinking about um, the, the possibilities of uh, extending, you know, this framework to other areas. Um, it's kind of a big question, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know um, if, um, if, you know, you, if you ever have, um, if you ever had, you know, suggestions of, uh, or recommendations of expanding this to other domains. Mm -hmm. it, it boils down to what are your goals and can you measure things that will drive the results? 
every every one of us works in a space where we probably have some goals and if it can be measured then you put it up there and you always look to it <clears throat> you know the thing we didn't discuss though <laughs> which i kind of didn't know at least in this context how to bring it up is um the sensitivity to what you're measuring and and because especially with our fundraisers they are and Jake, you can speak. I'm talking to Jake Schroth, by the way, if he's still there. Um, you can speak to this if, if you feel like it. But I always wonder um, about people are very goal driven. You put a goal out there, they're going to go to it. But what does that do? What are the unintended consequences of those things? So we're grateful that there was a lot of work done in this. There's There was a metrics sub um, committee or something like that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and they spent a lot of time talking through what was most important. And at the end of it, not everyone agreed with what was put up as a six. There were strong feelings about a couple of those, but they ended up saying, okay, this is what we're gonna go with. But there was discussion about what might, what unintended consequences might there be by putting a particular goal up there. You know, so you always think about that too, because if people all go for that and they, you know, there's something that might be more important and that's put by the wayside, what does that do for you, right? So there's, there's, um, it's, uh, yeah, Jake's coming on. So <laughs> any comments from you, Jake? Jake's one of our, you know, star fundraisers. Oh you? no, stop it. <laughs> no, I love the work you guys do. And I'm glad Greg, who's on my team, Greg Debro here, um, let us know about this um, session. This is great. I always love to keep absorbing because it's complex goal. I mean, I think with fundraising, you know, being a fundraiser, it's in some ways it's kind of easy to create gold and metrics because it is just so it's at the end of the day, it's just about raising dollars and there's different schools of thought on how to do that. But for the most part, you know, we have to zero in on what's going to be the most um, impactful way to get to those goals. So I like that there, are, there's lots of different ways you can dice and you know slice the data. But um, at the end of the day, we need to visit. We need to have our visits high and our asks high, because we can't control the amount we're gonna get. You know, it's like I think you were talking about that three hundred million dollar gift. I mean, sometimes gifts just like you answer the phone and there's a gift, and other times you have to work really hard. And it's, you don't see that in the metrics. So some people look like, wow, they're raising a lot of money, but there's so many nuances to that. Even for me, sometimes I get easy wins and sometimes I, you know, I have to work a lot harder, but I love the um, direction of this dashboard. And I know my colleagues um, do, a lot of my colleagues do as well um, as a way to visualize the work we do and, and visualize how to prioritize it, so. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Greg. Yeah, and, and I was actually, Jake sort of uh, talked about it just now, but um, I looked at the usage stats, Tam knows this, and I know, so I, I took a look at like who on in our group has, has been using some of the Udo dashboards. And this, this is one that seems to be getting a little bit of traction with the major gifts team. So yeah, so my question to Jake was, is it helpful in, has there been adoption of it and are you, you know, are you and, um, you know, Elizabeth or Howie or whomever, like, are you having discussions about the work based on seeing a visualization of the work you're doing? You know, does, it, does that help you in your discussions with uh, the senior gift officers in the office? Like, you know, so is, is there action coming out of the visualization in that way? Yeah, so, um... There definitely is. I mean, we we use this in our check-ins, and I'm trying to pull it up here so I can kind of. But I'm having it's taking a little while here. But um, yeah, we do. We definitely use it in our check-ins as a way to kind of, you know, um, prior make sure I'm focused on the right, you know, priorities and the right donors at the highest level, and um, just keeps me accountable. And so for me, I really appreciate that. It's like, you know, using that as a, as a, um, we incorporate that as a, a kind of mandatory exercise to make sure I'm just on track 
you know, so I'm not, you know, I could forget about certain people, you know, because it's overwhelming to manage, you know, a lot of, some people manage huge portfolio, like 200, you know, prospects, you know, for us, we're really trying to keep it to a hundred and under, and that's a hundred people with a hundred different dreams, goals, visions, and connections. And so it's super complicated to juggle that. Um, so I would say, yeah, we use, you know, some we, of the quadrants, the four quadrants, we use more than others, definitely. But, um, you know, I think it's, it, as it is a complex thing and it's ever evolving, ever changing, you know, it's, this is miles ahead from when I started at Berkeley, I don't know, I guess almost nine years ago now, doing this exact same work. So, I mean, this tool, this has come a long way and it's really, really helpful. Um, and also the, just the fundraising dashboard. I don't know if you're involved or if this conversation is around that but the little like gas gauges of like, you know, commit amounts, ask made, significant contact reports, total qualifications. That's your world too, right, Tam? Uh, it's a slightly different world, but um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> That's so the real time data. I mean, I guess just the visualization though, anytime there's visualization, I mean, that's, okay, here we go, I just opened it up, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the same sort of thing. Um, you know, we just focus on what, you know, we have, we prioritize and, um, you know, I don't know if there's any, anything else to say. Um, there's, there's certain parts of the quadrant that work the best, better for us, which is, you know, the lower right-hand one around capacity versus last significant contact or visit. This is probably one of the top quadrants we use um, and talk about as it's all about visits, as I said. And we have to be meeting with the biggest prospects. We got to make sure we're prioritizing the biggest prospects. And so um, that is incredibly useful, along with the upper left-hand quadrant around, you know, kind of the main metrics, visits, asks, and ask amounts are the most important. Those are things you can control. Commit amounts are great, but it's like that may or may not come in, and it may or may not come in at the levels that you ask for. Um, but it will come in if we're asking and we're meeting constantly. So it's interesting. So Tam's sort of giving a free user research session right now. It's just like, oh, this is how it's used. Oh, here. no, no. We follow up with Jake. Oh, I, I know. No, I'm just. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, one thing, though, it's something that in the way Jake just framed that, like it harkens back to something Tam said almost at the very end of when she and Jake were talking, which is paraphrased. Our ability as analysts to report out and help you know, fundraisers or, who, or whomever you're building a tool for is only as good as the data comes in. So yeah, so Jake, if you guys aren't putting in contact reports or visits or calls or emails, that won't be measured. And that's with whatever it would be. It's like when I work in admissions, our ability to report on high school visits or community college visits or whatever it was, was only as good as the admissions officers telling us where they went, what they did, and when they did it. If they didn't do that, I couldn't report out how on that activity of the office, right? Reading's easy, it's automated, but things where it's required for the person doing the activity to actually log it. And then that helps you, like you said, with your check-ins, your chief conversations, whatever it would be. And it helps in a lot of different ways, but yeah, we can only report it if the data is collected and collected well, cleanly, yeah, I mean, contact reports are the bane of our existence, really, because they're just, it, um, it, we can easily get behind on those. But having this holds us accountable and it creates a little bit of pressure to kind of like make sure we're at least just logging. I think sometimes, me too, you overthink it because it's like, we, the more information we have, the better we are at our jobs. So, I mean, every bit of it's like intelligence officers like we just need as much information as every data point can matter in terms of your solicitation strategy on a donor and so we really try to just put in as much and so that some in some ways that kind of makes it overwhelming because you're like oh I just had like three visits in Silicon Valley and I need to like do a brain dump on everything that happened because there's some there's these nuances that really matter um, so yeah, that, that is the only hindrance. It's like, ugh, like it can, it's not the fun part of the job for sure, but I know, we know it's important. Francesca, you had a question? 
Yeah, well, first of all, I just wanted to thank you all for doing this. And I want to, I know we're coming up on 11 o'clock for, so those of you who can stick around and keep talking, please do. But before you go, um, our May session is going to be secession planning with James Dudek. Our, uh, sorry, our April one and our May one is going to be a joint session with the Cal Coaching Network about assessing. So, um, so my takeaways and my, my, um, my, like, some of the things I'm processing, because I think I'm similar to Janata in like, ooh, how could I use this? First of all, tour de force, this is kick-ass stuff, use of Tableau, I'm like super impressed by. Second takeaway, March 10th is Big Give Day, so that's in my calendar as an alum. I will not ever be one of those big donors any of you will have to talk to, but like, I'll be in there. And the third thing, I just want to uh, extra appreciate the way that you thought through, I can only imagine the subcommittee here meetings, okay? I think we all are sort of picturing what that was like. But what I'm so struck by and impressed by is that when it comes to fundraising or anything that comes to, to like quantitative measures, like for me, I'm enrollment management, right? It's so easy to just use Tableau for that part, but you embed it in not only the what, which is the dollars in, but also the how and the when for those who have different kinds of metrics, and I was really thinking through of the scaling part, right? Where the, you know, so for each, this is also a model for sort of diverse team work, like hang with me folks. But if in our assessment, if we're thinking not only what are we trying to do, how might we do it? Different members of the team will have different kinds of metrics that are meaningful to them but they all mean the same thing to the supervisor. So they all mean the same thing in the end. So I really, I love that you put, you use Tableau or whatever visual work to show that, but it also meant that you all conceptualize on the front end, right? Not only what are we measuring, but how will people be doing that? And then how will we measure the how? And I just think that's one of the, that, so I'm really thankful for that. Like that's a major gift to me, right? And that's gonna be my takeaway. So no question of just thank you. And like, I, I just, yeah, that's it, so. Thank you so much for letting us come and share this. I'm really looking forward to seeing others. Thanks, Tan. And Jake, thank you. And thanks everybody for being here with us. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, but that Tableau stuff, I got to say, man, that's a lot of work and extra thank you. I know Alfred already said it, but the fact that you made a, a theoretical one for us to see it in real time, I know that was a lot of work. I hope you get to take that on the road to other people because it was really great to see. So it was a fun project to work on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Fun. Yes. Let's go with uh -huh. that word. Right. Um, <laughs> Well, is there anything, uh, Alfred, I think you can stop the recording.